Hello again everyone. I wanted to um, tell you about my latest experiment in my effort to cure Morgellons disease. Uh, the reason I wanted to share this particular experiment is because this seems to be working. It had an immediate effect causing me a histamine response. So let me explain by giving you some background information about why I chose this latest experiment. Uh, my infectious disease physician is Dr. Neelam Upal. She treats many patients who have Morgellons disease. And it is her opinion that Morgellons disease is in fact a filarial worm of some sort. Uh, it is a parasitic nematode or filarial worm. Now her protocol includes, a, includes prescription dewormers such as mebendazole, ivermectin, permethrin, albenza, along with antibiotics uh, depending upon the patient and their co-infections. Um, other physicians in the country, as few as they are, who treat Morgellons, they also use prescription dewormers. Now her treatment works. Fourteen months ago when I was first diagnosed, um, I received prescription dewormers and within a few weeks, the threads that came out of me changed. And let me show you a picture of that. At first, uh, especially when I bathed, I would find things that looked like cotton balls floating around in my bath water. And it was shocking. It's like, where did these come from? And when I picked them up and held them, sometimes they felt similar to a cotton ball, but kind of with a plastic-like uh, thread. It felt like plastic. And after Dr. Upal gave me prescription dewormers, within a few weeks, these wads of threads that looked like cotton balls that exited my skin became very brittle. In fact, when I picked them up and rubbed them, they, they would crackle like as if they were glass. and they would fall apart. So the prescription dewormers seem to kill the threads. And uh, I went from having large thread-like objects coming out of my skin to having extremely small ones coming out. And I think that was a direct result of the prescription dewormers. In addition to uh, the threads becoming um, hard and brittle, also hard objects started ejecting from my skin. And here's a photograph of one of those hard objects. Uh, these are all magnified at a hundred times uh, magnification. Uh, it's Dr. Upal's opinion that these hard objects are actually clusters of eggs that died and then the body ejects them. Okay, in any case, the use of prescription dewormers, although it works, it is a very, very slow process. And Dr. Upal thinks that it could take up to five years to eradicate this infection. So I am always searching for other ways to alleviate my symptoms and to augment her treatment or when I'm between uh, prescriptions, I can use a homeopathic method so that I'm always under some type of treatment of some kind. Uh, so I really didn't know anything about a filarial worm. So I started reading about that on the internet and I, I read about filarial worms that are common in horses. Horses can get an infection from flies, gnats, mosquitoes, and other biting insects. And they inject, uh, these insects inject eggs into the horse and the horse becomes infected with a filarial worm. After receiving one dose of ivermectin, uh, the horse's neck becomes extremely itchy. They have a histamine response. 
which is basically an allergy where you have inflammation and it causes itching just like any other allergy that you might have experienced. So the horse's neck itches a lot and they can develop sores on their neck, around their mouth, and they develop scabs. This all sounds familiar to Morgellons, at least to me, because after my first few weeks of prescription dewormers 14 months ago, when I first discovered this infection, my neck became extremely itchy. It was like insanely itchy. I had never felt anything like that before. It was not like the itching was on the surface, it was underneath my skin. So that was a new experience to me, but I thought that it is very familiar to what horses experience. Okay, and of all the uh, physicians that do treat Morgellons, as few as they are, they all prescribe dewormers and they use garlic and other things that are commonly used to treat worms. All right, what is a nematode? A nematode is an unsegmented roundworm that are usually microscopic in size. Okay, here's a key. It's microscopic, which could explain why you feel things moving around under your skin or these creepy crawly feelings under your skin, but you can't see anything. Well, many of them are microscopic. Uh, the body of a nematode can be long and narrow and as in many cases, they appear to look like threads. There's another similar similarity to Morgellons. Morgellons sufferers have threads or thread-like objects coming out of their skin. The origin of the group's name, uh, the word nematode, comes from the Greek word nema. That means thread. So that's what a nematode is, a thread worm, coming back from the initial Greek translation. And many are too small to even be seen with the human eye. Okay, they are found in terrestrial habitats, so they are out in the soil. There are many, many different kinds, thousands of them. Some feed on fungi, bacteria, other nematodes, or other microscopic organisms. And of the more than 80,000 types of known species of nematodes, some of them prey on people as well as plants. And nematodes can infest and ruin crops. So I thought um, I should investigate how organic farmers get rid of nematodes without using pesticides. Uh, in the Journal of Plant Disease, the issue July 2007, it stated that some nematodes have spear-like mouth parts in which they use to burrow into plants. Now you may have seen pictures on uh, various YouTube videos of um, Morgellons that seem to have spears or hooks on the end of them and I have also taken photographs myself at a hundred times magnification and uh, it creeps me out. You don't know what it is. Is this an insect or what? It looks like hooks on the end of these things. Well, that is also common with thread worms. Okay, so, um, so I found that in the Journal of Plant Disease. I mean, that's the science of it. So if Morgellons is indeed some sort of nematode, thread worm, filarial worm, then how can you and I help to suppress it? Um, I am blessed that I have a doctor who will treat me with prescription medication. Some of you are fighting this all on your own. So what can you do to get rid of these nematodes naturally in a way that you will not hurt yourself? Well, I found out that organic farmers employ marigold plants to eradicate nematodes from the soil. And here I'm going to show you a photograph of a crop where they plant one row of marigolds and one row of their vegetables. In some cases, a farmer will plant an entire field full of marigolds for one season and then rip them up and plant their crop. And the marigold plant in its adult form so you would get it all the way to the flowering marigold, they kill all of the nematodes in the soil. And 
find this at your local health food store for about $8.50. If you want to make your tea bags stronger, um, I found this Herbs of Light Calendula. It is the pure oil which you could add a few drops to the tea. Now this tea is rather mild, it tastes good. The drops which are stronger are bitter. So I, I really didn't want to go with this option because it's expensive. So what I found was you can buy bags of whole marigold plants. And this entire bag cost me about $8.50. And I'm going to show you a photograph that when I poured this out into a very large bowl, uh, I couldn't believe how much of the plant was stuffed in here. And what I did was I mixed a little bit of food grade diatomaceous earth in with the plant to prevent any insect growth because I think this bag is going to last me several months and because there are whole dried plants in here there is a possibility that some insects could hatch in there so mix it up with food grade dimitaceous earth it's very inexpensive I can get an entire gallon um, online for eleven dollars and you can also use the the um, Dimitaceous earth on your mattresses and carpets, they kill dust mites and bed bugs and all types of crawling insects, which would be good to have along with your Morgellons infection. Along with the tea, you can also buy salves and lotion of calendula. I actually found calendula salve in my local uh, grocery market. It's around the baby supplies, and this is called baby lotion. Okay, so um, I can tell you right now that the, uh, the large bag here of whole marigold plants is very strong and bitter, which I'm glad it's strong. That's what I'm shooting for. So how do you make that into tea bags? Well, I'll show you another picture here. I took um, just standard coffee filters scooped out some of the marigolds into the coffee filter and stapled it. This tea bag lasts five days. I get, I, I boil about three cups with this tea bag and I use the same bag five days in a row and it's still strong after five days. So this seems very economical to me. The only problem was it tasted very bitter. So what I did was I added a cinnamon stick uh, to the pot. And if you try to buy cinnamon sticks in your grocery store, they're expensive, but many of the dollar stores carry a whole bag for one dollar. So I've used this quite a bit. You can see how much you can get for a dollar. And this cinnamon stick will make this tea taste wonderful for five days. Now if you can't find cinnamon sticks in your dollar store, what you can do well, as another option, uh, many dollar stores sell cinnamon and I can get one of these large cinnamons for one dollar and you could put it inside the tea bag so that you don't have loose cinnamon floating around. If you don't like cinnamon, I guess you could experiment with other things like lemon oil or peppermint, any type of flavor that you like in your tea. So I'm making my own tea bag there and um, I get at least three cups, at least three cups a day I'm drinking. And I add Truvia or honey. I like Truvia because it's a natural herb and there are no chemicals in it. Okay, so after drinking my first dose of marigold tea in the evening, the very next morning, I had a histamine response. My neck, once again, became insanely itchy, just like it did uh, more than a year ago when I first started prescription dewormers. So I'm just interpreting that as a sign that it is killing some of these nematodes, these thread-like things that are under my skin. 
and I can handle this itching. Uh, every once in a while my whole body will itch, but it's under my skin and it's, n it's not anything that I can't just ignore and avoid itching. I don't want to scratch my skin and uh, open up any wounds which could cause a secondary infection. Now after I bathe, I'm still using a maintenance dose of borax, about a half a cup per bath. After I bathe, um, I'm using the Calendula lotion. And I want to tell you that when I lotioned my arms, I saw little black specks coming up. And upon really close examination, they were the uh, very, very small black threads. Um, I couldn't dig them out. Like part of the thread was in and part was out of the skin. And I scraped it with my fingernail. Could not get it out. Um, but it was the smallest black thread that I've been able to see without using a device. So I took that as another positive um, result of this Calendula lotion, putting it on my skin after a bath. It, it was also seeming to kill anything that was on the surface of my skin. And right now I don't really have anything coming out of my skin except uh, there might be little dry, crusty objects coming off, which if they're dry and crusty, I'm assuming that it's dead. Now, if this lotion is too expensive, I think this small bottle is around $8. I thought you could take your regular lotion and add the Calendula drops and maybe water it down and then mix it up a bit and that way you would have enough to lotion your whole body just by augmenting your regular lotion with um, the actual drops, the oil. So there's several, several treatments here. I think this is something that I can keep up not only for months. I, I could keep this up for a year if I have to. I don't mind drinking this tea. It tastes good. It's easy. Anyway, I think this will be a very easy protocol for me to continue. Uh, the tea tastes good. It's very easy and inexpensive. I think the next step in this experiment will be to try to find different forms of marigold because different forms of marigold attack different forms of nematodes. Um, this is one that I found at a website called vitacost.com and this particular flower came from Egypt and it's all organic and everything so it, it is safe. Um, I'm going to start looking for different types and um, I hope you can try it and maybe you'll have good results also. I'm hoping and praying for the good results and uh, God bless. Keep in touch.